home. We're going to do a video diary. Price is right. All right. I moved to California. I told you this a while back. I moved to Cal I ran away from home, and I moved to California to try to be a, a movie star. Okay. 2004, February the 12th, 2004. Instead of taking a right, I took a left at the ATM and went to California. Everything was all screwed up with that. But I ended up having two jobs. So I originally got them together so I could have the same days off every day. So Tuesday and Wednesday, no, Tuesday, well, Monday, Tuesday, whatever the hell it was. I would go from Anaheim, as actually Buena Park. I lived in Buena Park, okay, Anaheim, Buena Park. I would go from Buena Park to Hollywood, 30 mile trip. A 30 mile trip in California. If you take the freeway, can either take 40 minutes or it can take three hours and vice versa now this is back in the day when people were going completely crazy because the gas was 256 <laughs> 256 yeah they were upset because of that yeah so if you took the freeway a three hour, 30 minute drive could take, 30 mile drive could take you three hours. So, I got tickets, I got tickets, and I went to the prices right. First time I went there, well, I, I didn't get picked. Okay, I didn't get picked all 16 times. Okay, fine. But I had one very important memory, but I'll get to that later. But the way this would go is that you would Fairfax. And you know, they used to you know, back in the day they used to say 90, 9600 Beverly Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, nine double oh three six. yeah, that's the address, but the place you would actually go was Fairfax. Fairfax. On Fairfax Avenue, on the sidewalk, there was a gate, a um, manual gate, you know, where people could walk through, not cars. And um, you would sit there. You would get there the night before, and you would sit there. You park your car on the street. No, would bother you because it was, you know, like, you know, past the time curfew, whatever, for putting stuff in the meter. You'd sit there in the street, and then more people would come, and then more people would come, and then more people would come. You would sit there. You would all camp out there on the street. This could be like six, seven o'clock in the in, at night. 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night. You guys would all camp out there the whole night. The next day, 6 o'clock in the morning, they open up the manual gate. You got your ticket in your hand. You hand them a ticket. They look at your ticket. They say they give you a little slip of paper with, uh, on the order of the number that you came in. Number one, number two. I was using the. T I was never, ever, and not in the front row. And they tell you, go, get your car, park your car in here, come back at 8 o'clock. Cool. So you park your car, and then you, you might go across the street. Now, if you're going to go to the camp, luckily I'm a guy, I could just take a piss across the, you know, in the alley. But if you had to go to the can, there was a, a bagel shop across the street. They would let you use the bathroom if you bought something. 
They were only open from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yeah, they, they knew who their customers were. So, it would, so you know, you hang out, park a car, hang out a little bit to 8 o'clock, and then you come back at 8 o'clock, and there's two guys there. One guy looks at your ticket, and the other guy's got a clipboard. Now, this clipboard, I looked at the clipboard, and it's got 325 numbers on it. But under one number, there's a line. There's a line. I had no problems because I was there early. If you have got to about 168, but you were with someone, they would say, uh, uh. Now, if you were above the, the, the number, 168, they would say, come back at 10 o'clock. Fine. But if you were below that number, they would say, come back at noon. Now, you, if you come back at noon, you were on standby. Now, see, in the early days of The Price is Right, you saw a lot of empty seats. They did not want to have or have that happen again. So, bus groups would come in. They'd have bus groups from San Diego and different groups and stuff. But this is, here's the thing. They were very strict. If you said you had 30 people on your bus, including the bus driver, you better have 30 people on your bus, including the bus driver. You're out of here. They had no, it was like, you're gone. They had no problem saying goodbye. So, that's where the 12 people, 12 o'clock people came in. 12 o'clock people, the standbys, would fill in for the people that couldn't make it on the buses. Could be some rain or something going on, but, you know. They wanted to make sure there was 325 people in that studio. No questions asked. So, <clears throat> I need a drink. 10 o'clock, you came back. You were sitting next... You got your number, you came in, you sat next to this. You sit next to the same people for the whole 16 hours. They check your ID, they check your social security card. All right, very good, very good. And then the people who were handicapped, there's two different, there was a couple of things. Besides the people that want to be contestants, people who have been contestants before, you know, they were out. I met one guy, there was one guy there that won a double showcase in 1980. 24 years before I got there. He would come there and just watch the show. Just just for shits and giggles. So, he was out. You can't be on the show twice. Well, back then you couldn't be on the show twice. Now they screwed up all the damn rules. But... And the handicapped people they had a special spot for them because they had the studio. It was a little crazy. I'll tell you about that later. <coughs> <coughs> oh, they gave you your name tag. They gave you your name, your price. Your they gave you your price tag. Your price tag name tag. And you had to go by your first name, whatever the hell it was. They used to joke if your name is Apple. Some famous person named their kid Apple back then. That's what you're going by. And the, the guy running the show was uh, said, uh, Anybody from Canada? Yay! I'll speak slower then. <laughs> you, you get away with it back then in 2004. And then, um, then you sit there and you talk, you know, I mean, I met a lot of people. I met a lot of people when I was at The Price is Right. Before we go to the next phase of what happens, I met a lot of people at The Price is Right. I met one guy that family wanted to have him institutionalized. 
I met one guy that survived 9-11. I met one guy that thought that every disease in the world could be solved by magnets. I met one guy that thought that Bob Barker owed him a car. And then one night I was there and I was a little bit late. The person next to me and the person, four people next to me, both ended up in the showcase together. Now, if you, sit, you sleep on the street, you know, you're thinking, okay, you sleep there. No, not really. A bunch of college girls from Indiana, they were in there. Now, you watch the show on... Now, back then, there was no TiVo. Okay, there was no TiVo back then. Jeez, 2004, that seems like dark ages now. But there was no TiVo back then. But you watched it on VCR, and you wrote down every price there was. You wrote down every price of every... To this day, I still remember in 2004, the big green egg is $900. But other than that, I don't remember anything. But you, you, they were memorizing the prices. The gal played... Um, the gal over here, the college girl, she played checkout. I mean, we're talking... They were like... Everything, the green big egg, the Metamucil, and all that crap. They were, you know, memorizing price. They were like quizzing each other on prices over here. Hilarious. And then one guy over here, the gal over here, the one that, that was in the showcase, her husband took an extra day off of work just so she could be there. Because <coughs> they missed the first day. And that's that guy. So one guy who was second in line. A couple of days before. But the problem was. Is that. He. Um, he was second in line. The problem was. The guy in first in line. Had 150 people. He was holding the line for. What? What? He didn't make it on stage anyway. So it didn't really matter. But. Um, Alright. Now back to. The, back to the rest of the story. Now. You know, you get your ID checked, you got your social security card with you, and they check that thing, and then you sit there, and you sit there, and you sit there, and then they bring out two director's chairs. Two directors come out. One guy is talking to you, and the other guy is sitting there with a the clipboard. And he, you bring you up ten at a time, and say, What's your name? Who are you? What's your name? Where you live and what do you do for a living? And then you say it and then this other guy's over here going, loser, boring, who gives a damn. And then, after that, you go through the metal detector and you sit in the back of the room. You sit in the back of, you sit in the back of the, um, CBS Television Studios was a call at that time. Now it's something else. But and then now, if you ever go to the Price is Right, go to the bathroom before you get in the studio. I don't know if they allow you to go to the bathroom anymore while you're in the studio, but it's cold in there. It is freaking cold. With all the lights, they have to have the air conditioning turned up to 80 degrees below zero. But, that's so okay. You sit in the back there, you go to the bathroom. And then finally, at 2 o'clock, they parade you in the studio one by one. You're sitting next to the same people for 16 hours, right? They parade you in the studio. Now, the studio is up a set of stairs. That's why the handicapped people get a special spot. Because it's... Like, up a set of stairs, I don't know how they made this damn studio, but it, you have to go up a set of stairs and then down to your seat. <coughs> so then, you know, they kind of have a little time, they warm up the, the pages kind of warm up the crowd a little bit, just a little bit. Now, back in that day, Outcast was really big, and so they were playing Outcast songs, I like the way you move. I like the way you move. 
And then the announcer comes out. Now, was, at that time, it was Rich Fields, who's now a weatherman in an L.A. station. And he was like, um, right, welcome to the Price is Right. Now, here's the rules. Number one, I can't remember. There's three rules, but I can't remember two of them. I can remember one of them. One is, guys, no kissing. Nothing to say anything wrong with that. And number two, don't hurt Bob. Don't hurt Bob. Say it again. Don't hurt Bob. All right. Then, what else we had? Oh, yeah, we had, um, then they did, <coughs> they did a dancing contest. I was pretty, I, I went on stage and did that. And then they had a price, honorary prizes right announcer contest. I won that. Bob Jones, come on down. And they would, um, you know, seventeen time. Don't stand up until Bob Barker comes out. Unless your name is called, don't stand up until Bob Barker. Now they had the first. Four contestants. Everyone was screaming and yelling. So they had the first four names on cue cards. And they would show them cue cards. And they would say, <coughs> they tell them, don't, don't stand up until you're either called or until Bob Arker comes out. And that, no. And they also said, in your line, you are not guaranteed to be in the show until Bob Barker walks through that door. But don't screw up. Only have one guy screw up. That's the guy that thought Bob Barker on the car. He's nuts. Now, and then, finally, a dead silence comes across the crowd. Here's what you'll see. A dead silence falls across the crowd. This is 9456978. Price is right. Price is right. Nine four four five five six seven eight. Now, remember in the early days they had that thing, that bunch of lights that could run around. You thought that was like computer graphics? No, it was not. One camera would be pointed to that. It was like something you make in, you know, glass. Something like you would make in, like, shop class. Light bulb, light bulb, light bulb, light bulb, and then flash. And they would point a camera to that one. And then we'd have a camera do all the other places. Here it comes. The, here it comes from the Bob Orker student. See me television Hollywood. It's the most beloved game in the world. The price is right. And then you know, everybody would scream and yell and yay. So and so and so and so. Come on down. Then the, then Bob would come out. Now, I go like, you know, I, I'd be on the side, so I knew what time the camera came over toward me. I was not stupid. I won this show pretty good. So I knew, you know, when to clap and when I was on camera. They never called me. Go away, the nearest in now for the price is right. <laughs> Up yours, buddy. But, you know, the first, I remember the first thing. The guy won, first game, first thing, he won a catamaran and a mop. First game I was, first price in game I ever saw played was Searcheroo. The guy won a mop. Now, I did help this old lady win a car in the freaking um, the money game. I get, told her which one to go. Then there was this really hot looking blonde. I gave her the price to the showcase, even though she was way off, but the other guy was way off too. I ran up on stage. All right. So that was you no know, May. That was May 2004. And then I got on TV a couple times, of course, all the time. 
And then at the time my wife, she came out to visit me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. My future ex-wife, soon be future second wife, came out to visit me. She, we were apart. Due to a lot of reasons I don't want to go into. She made up some t-shirts. Ex-husband, ex-wife, celebrating our divorce on The Price is Right. <coughs> oh boy. We were, I don't know. I kind of like having money in my pocket. I wasn't very happy with it. She came out to visit me. Let's just say I got laid. And then and that's all she wrote. But we went to California. We still went to The Price is Right with our shirts. And during the commercial breaks, I said, Me and my wife, me and my ex wife are selling a divorce on The Price is Right. And Bob said, well, You guys look so happy. You guys look so happy together. Why don't you just stay together? We were already together. But it was just, you know, bullshit for TV. This, I was a broadcasting major. I'm not stupid. That's it. So many we kissed. And then came back from a commercial after the fourth pricing game said, I don't think you people know. Dr. Phil, get out of the way. Here I come. These two people in the front row, they were going to have a divorce. No, they're not. Dr. Phil, they're... Marriage is saved. But, hey, I got it on the price is right. That's not it. And then she went back and then I went to the price is right a couple more times. And we said that California was too expensive, so we went back there, but. Now I have no idea what the hell they do to get all the prices right anymore. It's just totally screwed up. Since COVID and everything, and Drew Carey took over, and all the management took over, I have no idea what the hell's going on. The only good thing about the Drew Carey area is the rat race. I love the rat race. I love that one. I love the rat race. But other than that, I have no idea what the hell's going on. So I went 16 times the price right. No, I didn't get cold. Thanks for asking. But that's probably 16 more times than you motherfuckers. <laughs> so at least I had, you know, when I die, you can't say I had a boring life. It seems boring now because I work 47% of my life at work. But right now, I don't know. I did it. It was fun. Let's do it. Come on, go on. Don't piss on her. We got time. What time? Come on now. Come on. Let's do the clear. Ah. Yeah, come on. I mean, they play this song. They play a lot of songs. Yeah, really, you know what? Besides 9 11, the 2000s and the 2010s really have no identity. You know what I mean? No identity. I mean, 1990, okay, maybe you got the. Uh, the, 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 the plaid shirts and the freaking stupid, you know, the plaid shirts and 
the flat shirts are, you know, like Nirvana used to wear and all that crap, but I mean, come on. Damn, I wish you would have done that. What is so new? <coughs> God damn it. That's a bio beer. Yeah, they do it. They do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is my video diary. I don't care. Nobody watches my YouTube channel anyway. Nobody's going to watch it until I'm dead. Price is right. Uh. Price is right, price is right, price is right. It's weird, I go through like phases. Price is right, then Jeopardy. Then... Oh, I love that. No! Don't look at me like I'm dumbass. If you want a body, body, body. You is silent, is it healing? You is jumping, is it jumping? Is it jumping? Is it rhythm? Is it feeling? It's just a feeling. Is it feeling now, feeling, feeling that you need me. And with my eyes, it's all down here, down, down. Now come on down. Come party, party with me. Mom, come on down, come on down. Bam, bam. I'm we'll dancing. Damn. Deal is. Goodbye, sorry. Come on down. You want to party? Party with me. Uh, nah, come on down. <coughs> Don't you want to party? Party with me. Quality versus quantity. Party with me. Whitney Houston next. Uh, come on down. It's Whitney Houston time next. Come on down. Good dance. Bigger man. Boo, you better than you better than you. Bad me. Bad for me. And I'm tight. And damn, that's right. Na na na. It's just a feeling. I mean, it did it, I'll be with you, dear. He did it, don't I hear, call I hear, don't deny, don't deny, don't deny, Come on down, come on down, come on, come on down, come on down. Ah, uh, don't deny. Go on down, come on down, on party, party with me. Now come on down, 
me and his ego, if I will come on down. I've lived an innocent life. You lived an innocent life. I feel like Jimmy Stewart. You've lived an innocent, not, not a wonderful life, but you've lived an innocent life. No one can ever surpass what you've done. Well, maybe they could. I mean, I mean, not the, you know, people, I mean, the famous, you know. I mean, uh, George Washington and stuff like that, but I've lived a very interesting life. I got more to tell you than that, motherfucker. I got more to tell you than that. Thank you.